Welcome back to the Online Art Club. I'm Hannah, an education intern at the Palmer Museum of Art. This week, we'll be looking at architecture in art. Architecture refers to the design and construction of buildings and structures. Architecture is everywhere. It is the buildings that make up our hometowns, it provides different spaces for us, and it makes up the world around us. We will be learning about and creating art inspired by examples of architecture we see throughout the Palmer's collection. There are many different ways this project can go, so let's look at some art and get creative. Many of the examples from the museum collection depict architecture from interesting or extreme vantage points, creating unique angles and interesting views. Vantage point is the position from which something is viewed. By looking at something from different points, it can create illusions of depth and size. For example, Charles Scheeler's photograph of the level building is taken from a street level vantage point. The view looking up from the low angle makes the building seem like it's looming overhead, appearing very large and imposing. Also notice the reflection in the building windows. This expands our view of the cityscape and clouds while also illustrating how glass can be a strong and beautiful architectural element. This photograph displays a similar but even more severe vantage point from the ground looking up. This extreme angle of this photograph distorts the building and almost turns it into separate, abstract looking shapes. Yvonne Jaquette offers a different vantage point in this woodblock print that shows a bird's eye view of the city from above instead of below. By selecting a particular vantage point, artists can change how the viewer sees and thinks about what is pictured in their piece of art. Another thing to consider in artwork that depicts architecture is the immense detail that can be included. For example, this wood engraving of Old Main, the central building on Penn State's campus, contains an incredible amount of detailed line work that describes the structural forms, including the windows, columns, and the bell tower, as well as the textures of the different building materials and landscape elements. In a similar way, this beautiful watercolor rendering of a stage set design features many architectural details of individual buildings in the city view, this time with the added element of color. The rich hues create more depth to the scene than would be achievable with just black and white alone. In this drawing, titled New York Harbor, we see an abstract take on architecture, a subject that is usually presented in a more realistic way. It's easy to recognize some architectural elements here, such as the roof line and windows of the building on the right. Other lines, shapes, and forms are less literal and perhaps show areas of movement or light and shadow as they interact with the architectural forms in the scene. This work is fun to look at and a great example of how you can really take art your own way. I really appreciate the way buildings and other forms of architecture are created so differently in people's artworks. I can't wait to see what everyone creates this week. Our project is to make a piece of art that's inspired by some sort of architecture that you like. It can be your house, a building you see outside your window, a famous skyscraper, or a picture of a building that you find on the internet. There are endless possibilities to choose from. After you find what you want to work from, you can decide if you want to draw, paint, color, or even create a 3D structure of your building. It can be as realistic or as abstract as you want it to be. Build your house out of paper and tape, try to draw your school building, color windows purple and the sky green, draw a familiar place from a different angle, whatever you can think of that makes you excited to create. I'm going to draw and color my old house. My family moved over a year ago and it was the home that I grew up in, so I'd like to recreate the memory into a picture. So, like I said, I decided to make a simple watercolor drawing of my old house. I haven't been there for well over a year now, so this project is completely from my memory. It was a fairly simple project to do. I sketched it out with a pencil to start, and then once I had everything generally where I wanted it, I started adding colors. I chose watercolor because that is the medium I enjoy working with the most. The accents on my house were bright blue, so I liked getting to paint those on. Once everything was colored, I went back in with my midliner markers because 
I just think everything looks better and more defined with an outline. And once I finished the outlines, I was all done. It was a super easy and fun project to do, and I really encourage everyone to give it a try if you can. Let's tune in and see how the rest of the team decided to work with architecture. Hi there, it's Chelsea. This week, I decided to take my inspiration from Yvonne Jaquette's work, Midtown Composite, that we looked at earlier in this video. This image shows a vibrant city at night. Even though the artist only uses black and white shapes, our eyes fill in all the details of a buzzing New York City scene. For my picture, I used black paper as a base and white paper to create shapes. I didn't have a clear plan for how my picture would turn out, so I just cut shapes and started moving them around until a scene started to emerge. I live in Cincinnati, Ohio, where the Ohio River and its bridges define the outline of our downtown and our city's beloved skyline. The more I played with the shapes, the more this river scene started to emerge. I created buildings using rectangles and parallelograms for the windows and a tall skyscraper with thin vertical lines. I was careful to think about perspective while I was laying out all of my lines and shapes so that the buildings looked like they were receding into space. Mostly, that meant playing with the size of my shapes and the direction of my lines. The closer the object, the bigger it should look. I wasn't trying to make this look realistic, but the perspective does help the picture capture the essence of architecture. Since this is a city scene, I added extra buildings and shapes so it looked packed full of structures and beautiful architecture. Then I added a boat in the river and some lines to indicate water. I glued the whole piece down. This took some time, so I didn't include it in the video. After it was all glued down, I added some finishing touches like stars in the sky. Here's the final product. Today I'm going to draw buildings in a city. Since Rachenko's painting really inspired me, so I decided to draw buildings with a dramatic look of view. For those prompts, you will need a piece of paper, a ruler, a pen, and markers. My ruler was broken this morning, so I used my eyebrow kit to make straight lines. First, draw buildings using straight lines. I will draw various shapes of buildings. Please carefully draw buildings using the angle of the lines. Now, we will color the buildings using markers. Choose whatever colors you like. and I will paint the background. At first, I used a marker, but later I started using acrylic paints to paint the background easier. You can choose whatever you want. And I will draw the outline using fine line marker to finish it off. I will correct some shapes and coloring. I think I am all done. How does it look? I love this dramatic perspective that straight lines and buildings made. I recommend trying this architecture drawing with your favorite buildings and colors. For this prompt, I was inspired by the last piece we looked at, the drawing titled New York Harbor. I love the abstract qualities of this work. I was really excited about this drawing because my dad is an architect, so I grew up surrounded by his drawings of buildings when I would play in his office as a child. My dad actually designed a renovation of our house to match the style of the original design, so I decided to use my own house as inspiration for this drawing. It has lots of straight lines, lots of windows, a very typical 1950s home. I started just by using a pencil to sketch out the house from different angles. I layered them on top of each other to overlap the lines, creating a more abstract look. I also left some parts unfinished, so the lines stop around the page. I love the angles and the geometric shapes that were created by overlapping the drawings. I decided to leave it black and white, just a pen drawing, because I really wanted to take inspiration from the New York Harbor piece. I'm excited about the way it turned out, and I kind of felt like my dad designing buildings when I was doing this. Thanks for tuning in with us for another project today. Make sure to show us what you made by posting a picture on Instagram or Facebook using the hashtag PalmerOnlineArtClub.